I wanna ask you a question today. How do you think God sees you? Now don't just ignore that question. That's not a throwaway question. Because how you answer that question really will say a whole lot about your spiritual and emotional health in your life. How do you think God sees you? You see, one of the things that the evil one wants to do is to help you to believe that God sees you and looks upon you in a way that the scripture does not say. You know, we need to understand that the way the evil one most influences our life is not by coming in with a stealth bomber and uh, bombing our lives or carpet bombing and just destroy everything. No, the evil one the Bible teaches is the father of all lies. He's always trying to help us to believe a lie. He's always helping us, wanting us to, to challenge the truth of what God says and to believe what he says. And he does that sometimes not by just saying an outright lie, but just a half truth, a little bit of truth and a little bit of lie. And how and what you believe about how God sees you will influence the direction and the well-being of your life. Do you remember the story in Genesis chapter three uh, when the evil one tempted Eve? How did he tempt Eve? He tempted Eve with a lie. Well, God surely didn't say that. Well, you surely are not going to die. What he helped her to understand is, then thank is, is that God is actually holding out on you. If you eat of this fruit, you'll be wise. You'll be like him. You see, one of the lies that the evil one wants you to believe is, is that God is holding out on you, that God doesn't want your very best. We've been walking through on Wednesday night the book of Colossians here at church. And in the church uh, in Colossae, there was a problem of believing a lie. There were some teachers who came in under the influence of the evil one who said, Jesus is not supreme. Jesus is not sufficient. And Paul in Colossians wants them to know all that Christ is. He wants them to know how God sees them as followers of Jesus Christ. In fact, he uses terms like once you were alienated, once you were an enemy, once you were separated from God, but now, because of what Christ has done, you are loved and he has forgiven you and he has a hope and a promise for you. You see, if you see God and think of God as seeing you as one who's unforgiven, one who's hopeless, if you see God as one who's just waiting to crush you, waiting to pay you back for all the things you've done, then my friend, you have believed a lie because what God sees is one who he loves and that he gave his only son to die for, that you could experience and I could experience forgiveness, that we could experience what it means to be fully loved and to have a hope and a promise, that we could live in a security of having a God who sees us as his beloved children. How do you think God sees you? Because the answer to that question says volumes about your spiritual and emotional health and understanding of the depth of his love. May God bless you, and we'll see you next week.